So welcome back to quarterfinals day here at the Fuzhou China Open. Well, the Indian pair of Ranki Reddy are certainly stamping their arrival as real contenders in the men's doubles discipline here on the world stage. Incredible performance once again, beating the former world champions Li Jufei and Li Chen in two straight games. Well, our next match is men's singles, and it features the uh, reigning world champion against a former world champion. The reigning world champion, Kento Momota, the number one seed defending champion here, up against the 2017 beaten finalist here at the Fujo China Open, Victor Axelson of Denmark. After that, we'll have men's doubles, then women's doubles, then another men's singles, and we will finish with women's singles. So still a terrific lineup to come. But when we look at the men's singles draw from the quarterfinal stage, the first thing that stands out is the fact that there are three Danes, so six different nationalities involved, five seeds. We lost one seed in the very first round. That was Anthony Ginting. Then we lost Shi Wu Chi, former world championship silver medalist in the second round. We also lost Chen Long, who was a four-time former winner here and seven-time finalist. He lost in the second round as well. So having started the tournament so with six previous finalists at this event and four former champions, at quarter-final stage, we've only got one former champion, and that's uh, the defending champion, Kento Momolta, but two former beaten finalists, not only Victor Axelson, but of course the beaten finalists from last year, Cho Tien Chen. So two finalists from last year, the number one and two seeds this year at uh, the Ujo China Open. So the two players coming on to courts and Kento Momolta, I'm sure will be feeling pretty confident because as we will see in a minute, this will be the 14th meeting between these two players. And not only has Momolta won the last occasion, he's won the last 11 occasions. So that really is quite extraordinary. 12 of the 13 previous encounters between these two players, won by Kento Momota. But this is the first meeting between these two players at either of the China Opens. Of course, we have two China Opens each year. Now we've uh, come into the HSBC BWF World Tour, which came into inception at the beginning of last year. So first meeting at a China Open. But, in fact, a second meeting in China. To just explain that, they did actually meet in the Sudaman Cup four years ago, which was staged okay. in Dongguang. Three games on that occasion, but uh, not entirely surprising that it was Kento Momota who won in Dongguang, because he's won, as you've just seen, confirmed. Uh, he's won 12 of the previous 13 meetings. What a year this man is having, Kento Momota. He's been in 10 finals from 14 previous tournaments. And from those 10 finals, he's won nine titles. It's absolutely extraordinary. He won the German 300, the All England Super 1000, Singapore Open, Badminton Asia Championships, Japan Open, World Championships, China Open, Korean Open, Denmark Open and then lost in the quarter-final of his last tournament, which was the French Open. I think he just ran out of steam. I think that's uh, fair to say. Well, as far as this man is concerned, the number seven seed here, Victor Axelsson, he's a tall athlete, as you can see, that's six foot four. Went down one place in the world ranking this week to number six. Um, and he's number five on the Race to Guangzhou World Tour Finals. Two years ago, he reached the final here, lost out to Chen Long in that uh, final. He lost to Chen Long in the semi-final in 2016, and he lost to Chen Long in the quarter-final of 2015. I think he's probably pretty glad that he wasn't drawn, drawn against Chen Long this year. But as you can see, he had to beat Suniyama of Japan in the first round and then Parupali Kashap in the second round. 
both of his matches, as you saw, in two straight games. 25 years of age is the defending champion born in Kagawa on the island of Shikoku, the smallest of the four main islands that make up Japan. This is his sixth appearance here at this China Open and his fourth quarter-final. One a year ago, beating Cho Tien Chen, he was a semi-finalist. Six years ago, lost to Wang Zheming in that semi-final. Now, as you can see, his opponents have been dropping like flies because they've both withdrawn partway through the match. Darren Liu was promoted from the reserve list, replacing Kidambi Shrikant, who was a former champion here. Kidambi Shrikant won in 2014. And then in the second round, uh, be it uh, Li Zijia, who retired halfway through the second game. So in total, he's been on court 43 minutes, which is less time than Victor Axelson needed to win his first round encounter against Suniyama, which took 44 minutes. So as you can see, our court officials from uh, China, are both the umpire and the service judge, Incidentally, Victor Axelson, who's back from a whole catalogue of niggling Ladies injury problems, three finals for him this year. Victor Axelson, Denmark. Okay. And on my left, Momota Kendo, Japan. Momota Kendo to serve love all pray. So the defending champion the two-time reigning world champion, the left-handed Kento Momota, getting this quarter-final underway. One, so, Steen, normally no. we would suggest that Victor Axelson with three finals this year, two titles, Spain Masters and the India Open, that was his second India Open tournament, you'd say that's a, a pretty good season, but when you compare it to Momota, 10 finals, nine titles, sort of pales into insignificance, but it's not insignificant at all. No, it's, it's always a problem when you, for your opponent, counts the tournaments that he didn't win. <laughs> yes. That's, um, <laughs> that, that goes for a, a difficult match. Right. Two love. Well, the last time they met, which was the uh, semi-final of this year's Singapore Open. It was 21-15, 21-18 in 46 minutes. All England final, of course, was three games when these two met earlier this year. But obviously, Victor Axelson has some sort of psychological problem and perhaps technical problem. I don't know which. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think it's more... Uh the technicalities, uh, technical and, f and physical problems that are sort of like turning into what can be interpreted as a psychological problem. He's uh, just a very uh, good matchup for Kenta Momota, is uh, Victor Axelsen. Um, Victor's uh, strength plays directly into where Momota is strong, and uh, Victor's weakness is. Um, is exploitable Two, by Kenta Momota. He's got the weapons to um, to exploit them. So uh, it's uphill for uh, the Tall Dane. Yeah. just about to say this is the kind of patience that, that is, is needed from Axelson. The two. problem in my opinion is that when they play more and more of these rallies, uh, they're hurting physically more um, to the Dane than they are to Momota and that means that Victor starts going for, for winners. Um, so um, that's one of the things that, um, that Axelson needs to um, turn his attention to coming into the uh, Olympics. I think all 
also, I know you weren't in Paris for the French Open, but I know you watched the match because we were discussing it yesterday with Victor Axelsson being 19-10 up in the deciding game of the semi-final against Jonathan Christie and losing 11 straight points. He was suffering from a cramp. But basically, coming back once he's got over the injury problems and you come back into a match yeah. scenario, it's very different, isn't it? He, it he is. basically, he, he was tired. He was beaten on fitness. Yeah. And, I mean, that's one thing. The other thing is that if you're up 19, 10, then, um, in my opinion, you should be able to find two points along the road. And, I mean, it wasn't really near finding just one point. No. Extremely well done by Jonathan Christie. We simply have to uh, commend him for playing without mistakes for 11 rallies in a row. There's a good uh, accuracy by Axis. I mean, as soon as you realize that that you are suffering physically, then then you go for a totally different uh, tactical approach. Then you go for the 50-50 shots. Mm. So let's take 11 50-50 shots in a row and see if we can't win just two of them. And if we can't, then we've taken our chances. But playing on and on and on, sort of waiting to get... Um, uh, eaten alive. I don't think that's the the right way to do it. But no. But that was then. This yeah. is now. Exactly. A couple of uh, Victor Axelson fans in the audience there shouting his Chinese name, An Sai Long, Jai endeared himself to the Chinese fans by the fact that he's learned to speak Mandarin. Yeah. consistently it becomes more of a touch thing than a luck thing. That's a good lift. That's going wide. Yeah, Monolta did so well to get himself out of trouble. Eight, six. Stamgo is um, telling Victor that he's uh, playing actually uh, quite okay until the last smash. You advise him to go for the body if he's a little bit uh, uncertain. in that rally, Steen. 
Momota moved the Dane from the back to the front, to the yeah. back to the front, to yeah. the back. It was only twice that he played two shots to the same place in the court, either to the front or the back. It's a good plan. Yeah. Which suggests to me that he's quite happy to play these patient long rallies, Kento Momota. I'm certain he's quite happy because all the other matches have suggested that he's in better shape than uh, Victor Axelsen playing these long rallies here. Yeah. As long as they are going the way they are, where the sort of um, uh, the um, live standings within the rally is not too much in favor of Axelsen. Momota doesn't mind being um, a little bit below in the rally, as long as it's not too much. Mm -hmm. Because Axelsen moves as well as Momota, and, and in the um, in the long run, uh, Momota runs longer than Axelsen. I'm, I'm certain that he does that, yeah. especially at the moment when Axelsen is still on the comeback trail from injury. Oh, uh, my goodness, look at that. Oh, between the legs. Oh, he's <laughs> missed it! He's missed it! What a rally! Shot. And then this one here between the legs from Axelson. And I think a sign of the confidence of Momota, the fact he's able to sort of laugh, to that, um, laugh at himself. There, yeah. yeah. to the mid-game interval with a four-point advantage, Kinto Momota. Yeah, pinpoint accuracy. Leapt from the center of the court to play that round the head shot. Beautiful. 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 Ja. Et temposkift, enten frem af banen, ligesom det gør, når også når du bliver hængende fremme på den korte, så slutter den hurtigt. Men vi er nødt til at indstille på, at vi kommer til at skulle løbe rigtig, rigtig langt. Ja, vi, vi kommer ikke til at komme og komme til at gøre det. Jeg kan godt komme ind med de der. Okay. Men jeg har ikke rigtig mulighed for at holde nettet. Well, Thomas Stangor using all of his allotted time, because he walked back with Axelsen. Eleven, so he could continue his yeah. discussion. What was he saying there, Steen? Yeah, it was about um, the rallies that um, they were talking about that um, Victor wasn't really getting um, any uh, penetration on his first attack, so he would um, try to reduce the uh, pace a little bit um, in, in the rally and uh, then see if he could make uh, a change of pace once in a while. Uh, and that's probably a good idea, but it's, it's early times yeah. discussing reducing the pace in the rally, which is yeah. not easy to do. Um, and Victor says that he feels that he's got difficulties uh, controlling the net. That's how most of the rallies end, or so perhaps not most of them, but too high a number of the rallies end like this, where Axelsen uh, makes mistake on a uh, good opportunity, but not an opportunity that would give a direct winner. It's very rarely that it gives a direct winner. Uh, and if you go for the direct winner, you make a lot more direct losers. Yeah. Just picking up on that point, he should be concentrating on the accuracy of his downward shot with the look to follow up. And it's the follow up shot that he should be looking to to apply the either the winner or the... Yeah, I, I don't think the follow up is 
the right opportunity because you need more good shots but the follow-up should be of high quality again and then the next shot after the follow-up you yeah. should perhaps judge whether that might be an opportunity to kill it but you could always also say okay my opponent played a good shot i have to go back and play rally again start the r yeah and that start means building th all over again yes that means that this is going to be really really tough physically mm. and if you're not ready to do that if you feel you don't have the stamina, if you don't feel you don't have the legs to do that, then you cannot win. Yeah. And the problem in these rallies here is that uh, there's very, very few shots. This is from a Danish perspective. In these long rallies, there is so few that shots that are really causing Kento Momota any problems at all. Yeah. All the other shots are a piece of cake. Yeah. They at the office. It doesn't really matter. So the bottom line is the shot quality of Axelsen is not at all good enough, in my opinion. And that's why he's lost 11 matches in a row. Wow. Now you see that's what I was sort of alluding to a moment yes. ago. Go for just go Ten, for the angle 15. and the placement and make sure you're quick on the follow-up. Exactly. And here Momota made a mistake. He he doesn't do that often. Yeah. Many times you need to find another opportunity for a good shot for an attack. And if we think back of some of the great matches that we've seen with um, uh, Lin Dan and Lee Chong Wei. It's not the first time you have an attacking chance you get through there. It's not the second time. It's not even the third time once in a yeah. while. Only the fourth time either Lin Dan or Lee Chong Wei is able to uh, finally um, force a chance that's big enough to exploit. Yeah. No, I agree. Well, he's asking Eleven. for a towel down. Axelson. And I think that's the first little sign of fatigue. And, and the thing is, in these long rallies, I mean, the one with the better technical skills has the upper hand. And a good example of that is the president of the um, Badminton World Federation, Paul Eric Hoyer, because I can remember what his uh, VO2 max was when he won the Olympics. It wasn't very high. It was below 60, which is, for a singles player, quite low. But he was still able to uh, sort of um, outmaneuver people and even... Um, sort of wear them out because he was controlling the rallies so he didn't mm -hmm. have like four corners to cover he only had two choices to cover because they only had two choices left yeah and but that, that, that's that, the thing here that's interesting because i think this another left-hander because paul eric hoyer yep. is a, a lefty that was what i was uh, noticing earlier on the yep. fact that momota was forcing the Dane to do all the moving. Yeah. He was controlling the rally, and pushing him to the back, bringing him forward again. He's moving it himself, Momota, but he's moving in uh, sort of like uh, comfortable uh, patterns. Yeah. It's never um, long lounges or difficult positions. There's a good rally. Yeah. But that's, that's the kind of rallies like this and longer that Axelsen needs to be able to play consistently for one and a half hour. Yeah. That's what it takes. Yeah. Well, and then he might win. It's not yeah. <laughs> it's not a guarantee or anything. Well, he's having a 
having a very good spell at the moment because it's four straight points and now there's just two points in it. Challenging that, I'm not surprised. I saw that as a clear miss. Yeah, it was just where the net post is crossing the line from my position here, so I really uh, take a shot at this one. It was way out. What a terrible line call. That's, I, I mean, that's, that's why I said that's clearly missed. Correction. Service over 16 13. was the thing from a motor there was a chance and then he deemed okay the chance is gone again now I just play rally oh that's a great smash from Axelson that is over 14 50 beautiful He's one of only three Danes ever to reach the final of this China Open. Paul Eric Hoyer was the first 24 years ago. Can in Chengdu. I think the tournament was held in Chengdu. I think you're right. He lost to Dong Zhang. Dong Zhang. And the other one, of course, is Jano Jorgensen, who won this tournament three years ago. In fact, he was in two finals. Seventeen, fourteen. That tournament in Chengdu was my first um, tournament with the national team. Ah, oh, no wonder you remember it so well. there from Momota played to perfection just watch how he wraps his racket head across the flight line of the shuttle here it comes look at that beautiful earlier in the day we saw his uh, fellow countrywoman Nostomi Okuhara execute a number of the same shots in her match one of the most difficult shots in that team. Oh, can I see you read that? Service over. Nineteen fifteen. Played. Good net game there. Sixteen, nineteen. Good serve. I couldn't follow up. 
And now it's game point opportunities for the defending champion. Two game points well saved. This one, I think, gets the line, doesn't it? Wow. Yes, it does. Mm. Well, such a good serve there from Axelson. And then one's gone wide, and the opening gate. To last year's winner, Kento Momota, 21-18. Twenty-four minutes for that opening game. なんかそんなにいつもと違ってですね。あのフォアウトをね、フォアのフォアサイドからね、フォアのフィアはあそうですね、フォアを待ってる。ラウンドマッチですね。ラウンドステージ途中。あ、そうですね。そのね、ラウンドマッチ。ラウンドステージ途中。あ、そうですね。そのね、ラウンドマッチ。ラウンドステージ途中。あ、そうですね。そのね、
Well played. Keeping his balance. Good follow up. Oh, he's oh, running off. It's gone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he thought about it. He thought the run in anyway. Would you believe it? We've seen it in the doubles discipline. A player running off court to grab a new racket. Never seen it in but, singles. What, what was he thinking? What he doesn't have a partner. He was going to go. That was too long. <laughs> <laughs> really good deception. I that's think what. That's it. what's wrong. He's simply been running too little off court in those eleven <laughs> matches. <laughs> so well, far, every time he's tried to run off court and come back, he's won the rally. <laughs> that's the way to go. Oh, that was classic. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, is it up to the it's over. You've got to love it, though, haven't you? Yeah. Got to love it. Well, it's a really good start for Axis into this uh, second game here, and I must say that Momota hasn't really looked comfortable on this near side of the court so far. Say it, I don't remember, but I had the idea that it was Momota who chose ends, but I'm not sure about that. Mm. I actually think it was the opposite. I think it was Axelson. Good match up. I counted at least three or four times in that rally where Axelson was focused on the uh, back court where the shot still came to the front court. And uh, I guess that was opposite of what um, Thomas Daungo was um, asking him to do. You've got to leave the back court open in order to gain an advantage sometimes. Equals the longest rally of the match so far. We had a rally of 35 shots in the opening game. by the umpire. Yeah, it was. It clearly touched Axelson. Oh! Yeah, and he knows it too. That 
attempt at win rally. My access is where I think some of the uh, things that Thomas Dumbo asked him to do uh, succeeded. He was controlling the front court here, and that means that he doesn't have to give away a lot of height uh, on his uh, lift to the back court. Makes it easier for him to defend Momota's shots. Stadium lights, which are specific badminton lighting, being used here. Mm. That lunge forwards Six, and the height at which Axelson took that yes. net shot tells me he's a little tired again. He should definitely have been faster on that shot yeah. there. Reaching at a higher level gives him more opportunities. exchange in that rally absolutely superb yeah, that was a brilliant um, rally from the Danish perspective the mid-game interval, Victor Axelson with a five-point advantage. That's a lovely defensive shot blocked across court from Axelson. From a Japanese perspective, Steve, I think that Moroto needs to be a little more proactive again. I think he's been a little reactive. Yes, I was just um, thinking to myself that I, I don't really know what I um, think about this match. Either I think that Momota is sort of... Um, taking it uh, calm and relaxed and that he's going to gear up soon if that's not the case then he's actually in a little bit of trouble uh, perhaps Momota because um, uh, it doesn't look that solid as it has normally done mm. um, until we've seen otherwise I, I go for the uh, more calm and confident um, yeah. uh, way and they're also in order to be in real trouble, then Axelsen would have to continue at the same level like he played the last rally before the interval, um, which was really, really good. Yeah. And he's got to keep on overcovering the front court and accept that he's going to be um, sort of overplayed to the back line once in a while. That's a good defense. 
Yeah, the, the idea was there. He was here, like you mentioned earlier, Jill, he tried to take it as high as possible, which was good. But um, the execution, as Not you so see good. there. Sharp was the chance good? It was actually a good chance. But again, not a full power smash, a smash where Axelson stays in balance and can play on. Motor plays actually a clear, maybe two clears. He should just move closer and closer to the net, Axelson. You see, his upper body is leaning backwards like he thinks that, oh, yeah. it might be a clear. So the brain says it's perhaps a clear. It looks like a clear. There it was. Brilliant by Momota. down there. That's not a good sign. Yeah. Sign of fatigue. Exceptions bite a little bit on the motor as well. Reverse slice. Well, Axelson, after that long rally, taking on board some liquid. But he's restored his six point advantage, yeah. which he had when he was 7 1 up. Rallies he's played the previous one, Axelson. Well, it's the line judge has changed their minds, and it is indeed called out because Eight. Axelson when it was initially called in, said he was going to challenge. That's oh, well that is brilliant. Threaded it down the line. So right now it seems like whenever Axelson is played to the back line, he can just play it with a high clear back to Momota because his defense is actually holding up at the moment. But what about the drop shots if Momota mixes it up with drop shots? from Momota. It's always easy to sit up here and uh, come with uh, sort of uh, 
Monday morning observations on what should have done and so on. So, I mean, I guess it's okay to go for the winner here, but when you have that uh, seven, eight point lead, just play on, play on. There's no mm. need to give your opponent easy points. No. 11, 50. on the top of the tape and still landed in. <laughs> Turned out to be a perfect drop shot. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. He's got good length on his shot, Mortar. Axel's on lands with one foot outside of the court. Oh. I think this is far from 17. over yet, you know. In terms of Momota coming back or having a chance of coming back in this second game. In this game, game. Yeah. yeah. But this is this is where you really have to sort of um, get a hold of yourself if you're Axelson and say, okay, I need to stick to what's gotten me here. Mm. Once again, well placed shot. shot. Quick release of the racket, very little to judge the direction from for the motor the, th the other thing Steen about the experience of Axelson in Paris recently is that opponents will believe that yeah. they, can believe come they back. can come back. Yeah. But but I think I couldn't really hear what he was saying, Thomas Dango, but it was not in a uh, sort of like uh, he wasn't asking questions. He was telling what needed to be done. And uh, I think he could just as well sit out there with a little whip sort of <laughs> urging Axelson on. Are you going to do this? in the rally axis and I wonder well, that's really difficult to judge it actually seemed like he uh, touched the net with the racket but even I in think replay it was I think it was, it was the difficult. shuttle yeah I thought it was the shuttle this is going to be a drop shot from a motor axelson has got the defense Good shot. Giving himself more time with a higher clear, Axelson. Yeah. And staying in the rally. Let's going go wide. wide. There, was a lot, there was a time there in the forehand where he could have gone for the cross court winner, which probably Momota would have dived and saved and made it a winner. Now he stayed in the rally, played on patiently, and, and let Momota score his own points. Yeah. But he's probably dead tired, but I mean. Game point opportunities. To level this quarterfinal at one game apiece. One game all. 21-12, the response from Victor Axelson after losing the opening game against the defending champion. Oh, a very good response indeed. 48 minutes into the match and one game apiece. Yeah? There is no no trouble. Ivan, you know, there. We're going to be winning this match here. 
de her løfter, hvor der er højde på henover, når man kommer. Han skal have lov at tage de her dybe stemskridt stadigvæk frem af banen. Og der er ikke noget at spørge, fordi du ved, du spiller rigtigt. Det kan godt være, at han laver nogle point, men det kommer han til en gang imellem. Vi spiller rigtigt sådan her. Ikke? Det er flot. En du eller gang. Ikke? Frem og flytte ham på nettet her, ikke? Ja. Lige præcis, men vi skal have det netspil med. Ja. På ham, fordi så får han også lov at tage de lange skridt. Det dræber ham, og pludselig din overspiller, der er en presse lige pludselig. Hvis vi bare står og løfter ned, løfter ned, løfter ned. Så Når jeg spiller ham i run behælden, så vil jeg frem på banen. Ja. Nej, men nu se. Jeg har en helt ny til dig her. Nej, det er min. Bare smid den der væk. Han har ikke slået andet end det lige på den der. Jeg kan sige, det er faktisk lige for nogle gange. Bare lad os stå lidt. Lige pludselig gør ikke noget. Så må du spille væk. Og så klar på kroppen nu, for der er en kommet der. Ja, ja. Men nu, han ligger og vækster. Og jeg siger til den, at han ligger og vækster og lige prøve at sætte en tempo. Ikke så prøver han at gå tilbage, så man kan løbe ja, med dig. Ja. Det skal vi vise, at vi er sejre. Det er at blive ved med at løbe med ham. Ja. Og lad være med at tage de hurtige chancer. Ja. Ikke? Kom så. Hold. Well, he certainly seemed very positive there, Axelsson. Yeah. What, what was said? The first Axelsson said was, I'm, I'm playing well. And uh, Stango was um, confirming that he's playing well. And he was like, you are playing well. <laughs> so um, it was like... Um, Staying in there and um, and doing the right things, the things that are working, the high lifts to the back court uh, of Momota, playing the net sharp. He feels that he can um, stand the defense against Momota, and um, indeed he could in the second game. He's got to be ready for variations, of course. But. Um, It's a different approach. Where it's like, hey, hey, I can I can withstand the defense. I can I can play these rallies. And uh, Thomas was saying something about. Then he tries to inject pace with Malta. And when he sees that it doesn't really uh, pay his dividend, then he tries to run with you again. And that's where you have to be. Um, that's where you have to be tough. Mentally tough. Mentally tough because I mean Ball. there are openings. There are openings. Ball. That's stuck on the course. Oh, it's the little sticky round circle from the inside of a, a shuttle. A shuttle yeah. Oh, he's doing his own mopping on the court uh, in Ordenza at the Denmark Open. Yeah, at a number of uh, tournaments and It's really important. He's such a tall guy, mm. uh, so there's a lot of um, power that uh, needs to, a lot of pace that needs to be uh, broken when when he's breaking in his uh, feet and so on. So can't really afford that there's any kind of um, slippery spots yeah. around the court. Well, that was a real missed opportunity by Momota. Not this time. Time is over. One, three. And there he was sort of reducing the pace a little bit on Malta. That previous, not the rally we've just watched, Steam, but the rally prior to that, was one of the few occasions that I've seen Momota hit a smash in this match so far. He hardly ever hits a full power smash. No. Which always gives the impression that he could go up another gear. <laughs> exactly.
Here we go, there's another. Those in, perhaps. We can access and turn this. No. No. Yeah. It was unsighted. Yeah, so it's not Axelson that's challenging, it's the umpire that's asking Hawkeye because the line judge was unsighted. But it's interesting, Mamolta handed the shuttle back, so it's clearly in. <laughs> so nobody over. loses any challenges there. Oi, what a shot. Oh, my goodness. Well, an extraordinary save from Axelson from deep in his forehand corner. Driven across court, and then an extraordinary shot. There it is. And an extraordinary shot. This defensive shot from Mamolta. Looks like a squash shot he was playing there. Yeah. that looking for the front court area again well it's just before that we didn't really see it yeah. and Momota is um, in my opinion from his own long backhand he's playing way too much um, straight smashes uh, the Danes were alert that he might be going for the body but he's not really getting through when um, Axelson has had some long defense and some angled defense like we see Anthony Ginting do when he's playing well against Momota, so he just can't go straight for the next one. Something about playing back at uh, the net, I think. Even if he's far below. Tired. But he's hit a winner. Totally out of course as he hit that winner. Well, I should say afterwards, but look at that lunge forward. When the torso <laughs> falls down, that's always a sign that a player is struggling it physically. Is. If you keep your torso upright, then you can see that belief that they're still with it physically. So equals the longest rally. Two rallies of 40 shots now. Well, I know he made an error on that, but once again, Axelson, after he played the shot, there was no movement back no. towards the centre no. of the court. He was hoping it was going to be a winner. And I'm not sure at but, five, but six in a I'm deciding game when you can afford to do that. You can see the face. He's very patriotic, starts to get in the, the Danish red and white colours. <laughs> 
But this is where, I mean, it's 5-6 in the third game. There's so many tricks in the toolbox to get a little bit of extra break. Oh, well. It was called oh. in. Momoto is challenging, and I think Momoto will win this challenge. I think so, too. I think it's straight on the line. I think it was just inside the line. And certainly the inside edge of the line. We're getting very specific here, aren't we? <laughs> Challenges that he's been proved correct in this match so far. Momota. So back level. Match clock about to tick over the hour mark, and it's one game all and six all. say it's six all that in this third game here Victor had gifted very few points away compared to the first game mm. where there was a lot of smashes that were wide and um, yeah stuff but, um, the last two here they were costly wait, wait, wait. well it's six of the last seven okay. points now to Momota. Unfortunate with the broken strings from Axelson. Six of the last seven points for five straight points. Little phase of yeah, there play. Was four gifts. Yeah. Oh, that's beauty. Well, the run of points comes to an end at six. Whoa! Tom Stalbo shouting one rally at a time. in Indonesia, he played some of these high lifts, daring him to uh, win it from the back court himself. I mean, he's lost to him badly since then, but yeah. um, in this match today, with, with what the two players have got, it might not be such a bad idea to once in a while 
sort of uh, let the initiative go. Say, that's your turn. Yeah. Of course, the match you're referring to was the final of the Indonesian Masters in January. So it's a two point advantage for Kento Momolta, the defending champion, at the change of ends here in the third and deciding game. But I can't help but wonder how important those three points, since Momolta led 10 6 to close the gap to just two points, that might be very important. As far as it's important if you're. If you're uh, and you're five points behind at the interval, then it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's a long, long way. Two points. It's yeah. It's a good thing when, when Victor sort of like questions when everything. Thomas says, no, no, we just move forward and then we lift it over him. Come on here now, so he won't have it, he won't have him quick. <laughs> I, I, I think we could see a cramp here in this third game because um, he's not being allowed to quit. There was a, a couple of Victor fans in the arena here. I think there's a darn sight more than a couple. Fans very much getting behind Victor Axelson. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, good play by Mamolta. Again. That's well played. It's extremely well played. And Victor Axelson left absolutely stranded and they are the shots that uh, can hurt Victor at the moment he's he's been good in his uh, backhand defense axles and the drop shots from Momota that's probably a different case match that that staying in the rally then suddenly we to get some free points as well mm. that we normally don't see no more to give away yeah and having forced the short lift i mean he smashed directly at axelson which i suppose is a good tactic for such a, a tall player they yeah. struggle with the body smash but you're right Cheap point 
I think maybe it's part of a Danish Malaysian plan. The Malaysians played him in the first two rounds and they retired. So they take away his touch from him. Don't get him to know the whole world. Yeah. But it is difficult when you had two easy matches and then suddenly you have to play your best. This could be a semi-final, it could be a final. Yeah. Well, they've both been finalists in this event. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic save. Amazing. Flag axis on the for a second, forgot that Momoto is left handed. Excellent shot. Oh. Fantastic shot by Momota. What do you mean, because of the angle? The second after the follow up after the smash. Here it comes. The first is a smash. And this, this one, one is just a tap down below the tape. That yep. creates the winner. Yeah, so this one. Yeah. Just clip over the top of the shuttle. Exactly, play it with angle. Yeah. But yeah. also, fairly nice rally by, by Axelson staying in it. Not gifting easy points away in otherwise good situations. So even if uh, Axelson should lose this match, I still think he can take a lot from it in terms of uh, uh, tactical uh, things that he can uh, build on. Mental things, perhaps, also. So the three point cushion for Momota. This is the wow. decisive phase. I think it is. Yeah. It's, uh, four straight points, right? Yeah, four straight points. So I think actually the phase that sort of sealed the deal was from 4 6 to 10 6 in um, this third game here. Yeah, good point. Off. Oh, five straight points. 18, five. shot and taking it early. Well, we didn't actually see where he took it. Oh, that's a lovely placement of Smash 2, isn't it? Okay. a little bit more mortar. Now, when you said a moment ago we could see cramp in this uh, game, I assumed you were talking <laughs> about <laughs> Axelson. <laughs> <I was> <laughs> <laughs>
a nice shot. Okay, Axelson's really tired. Look, it's almost walking. Yeah. Oh my goodness, going for the trickery. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh! Oh, there's a challenge here <laughs> from Momota. I don't think Momota has got a challenge wrong so far, has he? I don't think so. That was the best case scenario <laughs> for Axelson that he was challenged. <laughs> there, another great challenge by Kento Momota. Well, just two points from victory now, the defending champion. And Victor Axelson in physical distress, I think it's fair to say, in that last rally. Absolutely. <laughs> Longest yeah. rally of the match, 52 shots. Do not, the not to try and influence the line judge, Axelson. <laughs> well. The best match from Axelson against uh, Momota for a very, very long while. Better than the All England final? Yes, I think so. Really? Strings have gone in the yeah. racket of Axelson. But he took his chance and anticipating the drop so shot. Look, in he goes, point. but the racket is already broken. Did remarkably well to reach that one, Momota. So match point opportunities. Five of them, to be precise. Oh, that's well saved. Perfect net shot, and very nearly a perfect reply. Great sportsmanship shown by both men in this quarter-final encounter. But Kento Momota, the defending champion here at the Fuzhou China Open, makes it 12 wins in a row against Victor Axelsen. Thirteenth victory overall against the tall bay. 12 wins in the last 12 encounters. And his mental supremacy over Victor Axelson grows even bigger. But he's through to the semi-final stage. The defending champion in three games. 21-18, 12-21, 21-16 in the deciding game in an hour lasting an hour and 18 minutes.